Hi everyone, Lillian Withers here and welcome back to Crack and Crafting. Today I've um, a relatively quick little project to show you. It's one we've done on Saturday at a beginner's class I had. So a quick hi to Anne, Jenny, Emma, Jilly, Melanie and Rebecca. It was lovely to see you on Saturday and I hope you enjoyed the class. Um, I've probably covered this technique before but uh, I thought I would go through it again, a, a quick refresher. It's the sheltering, using the sheltering tree stamp set. I absolutely adore this, absolutely adore this one. There are a few pictures on my blog and probably a, a couple of YouTube videos on it. I will put links on my blog to them also. And um, this has been on the main Stampin' Up! catalog for a couple of years now. I'm hoping that it will carry on again through 2018-2019 uh, but I'll not know until June um, so if if you love if you love this as much as I do and you haven't got your hands on it yet really this is the time to be ordering ordering it for yourself um, don't miss out basically it's a beautiful beautiful stamp set it's obviously got the tree the foliage a little bit of ground here bike bike frame a garden swing um, a garden rake some blossoms or oh, patchy bits i don't know what you call it uh, snow and some grass absolutely perfect it's photopolymer as well so it's so so easy to use even for beginners and this as i say is the project very quick very easy very simple but i think very beautiful the colors are just gorgeous and the sponging is such a simple technique I think I have probably done this before, but using a brayer, the, the rubber, the soft rubber brayer. So this time I'm going to show it using the sponge. As I say, I did this at a beginner's class on Saturday and it was just a perfect project for them. So I hope you enjoy this. OK, this is my Whisper White cardstock. It's just normal standard Whisper White cardstock. It has a lovely finish, perfect finish for inking techniques. I have already pre-punched using the one and a quarter inch circle punch. I've pre-punched a piece of um, post-it note. It's actually three little pieces punched through to, to make sure they're thick enough to actually cut through the punch. And the stampin' sponges, they come in a pack of three. I cut them into quarters basically. And um, so then you get 12 from a pack. You'll only need two for this project. And of course our ink pads. Now when I'm doing this the main colours are obviously pink and green. I like to take three shades of pinks. So the lightest one is powder pink, then blushing bright, then melon lambo. And the greens, the lightest shade is pear pizzazz, wild wasabi, medium and garden green as the darkest shade. And I also use um, early espresso for the tree trunk. But whatever pinks or greens or browns you've got ju just use them. Just use whatever selection you've got and uh, you can obviously always add to them as you go along. So to get started, I've got something on here. Always got something on. Smudge something or colour something. I've got ink in my hand, so please excuse me <laughs> as always. So as you know, the, the pads are a flip and click version and I've got a little stamping pad or stamping sponge. This is an old one. I love them because you can just wash them up in a bit of dishwashing liquid. And although that they stain, the, the colour um, won't transfer after they've been washed. OK, so I'm starting with powder pink, the smallest one. And always when you're sponging, give it one dab off onto scrap paper. That just takes like a, the rough look off the, off the ink. And um, if you go straight on it, you're going to get a sponge mark. So I'll do this as quick as I can, but uh, it's quite pale. I hope you can see it. I'll maybe bring it in a little bit. Hopefully that helps. Let me turn this lamp off. You might be able to see the shading better. No, nope, maybe not. Right, let's see how this goes. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm messing about with the lighting and everything today. Oops, it is. So I'm bringing the pink down about three quarters of the way. The land will come to about here, the grass will come to about here. And I do like a little bit of paler shading, like the white at the bottom. So 
that's the, the palest pink down as far really as I want it hopefully you can see that okay and next one I'll use is the blushing bride I'll use the same um, sponge because it's going light to dark and not dark to light so it'll do no harm to your ink pads and this shade doesn't come right as far down as the last pink as the the powder pink and so very very easy technique and if you use a sponge in a circular motion and I find as, as you use it the more you uh, blend in it almost like it heats the paper heat sink I don't know but it gets easier it blends much much smoother the last one is uh, Melon Mambo. You don't need a lot of this and you definitely will need to dab this off. And this is going more or less at the top and the edges. So use it sparingly. You can always add extra as you need it. But one little dab and see how that spreads, how that looks. I take it down the sides a little bit just to give the sides a bit of a frame really more than anything and that just warms up the top of the, the sky gives that gorgeous 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 glow so there we go so you've got your three shades the darkest at the top the medium pink and the very pale pink down the bottom you can barely see it uh, it's just enough to make a difference really beautiful so that's the end of pinks just for now Move them over and we'll start then with pear pizzazz. You see the way that comes off, you've got that patchy bit, that's what you want to avoid on here. Oops, actually, that wasn't the best, didn't dab it off enough, but it'll be great. It'll be cramped. And I just keep blending it in. The more you blend it, the smoother it gets. Yes, that is a bit. Thankfully, it's a grassy area, so that's actually going to look okay. That little bit of patchy green. So that's the palest of the green. As you can see, there's still that little pale white area. It's not bright. The, the pink's covered it a little bit, but um, I do like that bit lighter. Gives it a bit of a highlight. So the next wild wasabi again, not right up, kind of about midway up. the dark pink at the top. Use, use it sparingly until you're comfortable with how much shade is actually going on. And this is more or less going just along the bottom and at the very edge I'm just going to pounce it in. That will deepen the shade further and then blend that just a little bit up the sides a bit because it gives it that bit of a, a frame as you can see just up the sides there oops it is it and that's your sponging finished let me bring that out a little bit okay the next thing is our tree this has been well used, as you can see. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the stamp. It has just been so well used that it, it is now actually dyed early espresso colour. 
There's nothing wrong with the stamp. It's perfect. And remember with these stamps, I, I absolutely love them. If they start to get non-sticky and, and start falling off your block, your blocks, just give them a bit of a, um, a wash with dishwashing liquid to dry afterwards. And they're as sticky as they were when you first bought them. So it's important to remember this stage to take the mask off, the sun mask off and what you're aiming for. I positioned this in such a way because I want part of the, the, the top of the tree branches to fall into that sun area. So I'm going, I don't want the, the tree centered. I wanted it just slightly off, but still falling into the, the sun area. Give that a couple of seconds. I'll close this up just while I'm waiting. The light's shining on that. Okay, beautiful skeleton branches of the tree. Now we go back to our pinks. And again, um, in the same order, I do lighter to darker. But this time I start with the, the medium pink, the blushing bride. And that's quite a big stamp, so I'm just going to take the pad to the stamp rather than the stamp to the pad. Give it a, a nice cover. You may be able to see there's one little blossom just at the very bottom here. I use that as a guideline. That tells me that's the bottom of the stamp to me. So stamp down few seconds, lift it and I just turn it very very slightly and re-stamp, you stamp off a little bit, that'll give you two shades then, see that's quite pale but it's there nonetheless, beautiful and then the darker one, again take the pad to a stamp. So that's the melon mambo. Again, offset. I don't stamp it in exactly the same position every time, or you're just going over the ones you've already laid. So offset it slightly. Down. Green ink all over my nails. I'm bound to transfer that somewhere. Let me clean that off. Lift it and turn it and stamp it down again without re inking. There we go, that is so deep, that is beautiful. See the colours? So, all I do now with regards to it is give it, break up the tree trunk a little bit. I don't like this solid look quite so much. So I use the white gel pen. I use the, the Uniball, the Signo. Um, gel pens I just really really like them Stampin' Up don't do them anymore unfortunately but you can get them on Amazon so I put a scratch up the left side of the tree not a solid line just a scratch dab it with my finger a little bit I should actually bring that in so you can see it a bit better okay that kind of breaks up the colour there and a bit of a scratch. Let me get the ink running again. On the underside of the branches. You don't need to do a lot with this. And that just breaks up the shading a little bit. Yeah, I like that much better. So that is that bit done. The next bit we have to do is the sentiment. Okay, I pre-cut a bit of our vellum. It's very important when you're seed embossing to make sure you use the 
embossing buddy on it that takes away any moisture uh, any oil or creams that are on your hands on your fingertips if you don't take that off any stray embossing powder is going to stick to it rather than just sticking to the stamped area the stamped image that you want it to i'm using um you wore my heart as the sentiment from that stamp set just the font is gorgeous on it it really is so that's with Versamark. Give that a couple of wee seconds. You'll not see that really. You can see it a little bit, I suppose, until I put it through. I save these little boxes, these takeaway boxes, and pour my embossing powders into them. Pour it. Onto your stamp piece, flick it off a little. There we go, you've worn my heart, which is lovely. And then I will actually take the sound off the video at this stage because I'm sure you don't need to hear the heat tool going, so just bear with me. I'll come back in a sec. That's lovely. So for this, I just tear it. Okay. Yeah, that looks grand. You didn't center that quite enough, but that's okay. It'll still be all right. Now, this is a little piece I had already pre-assembled. The insert and everything's done for it. I simply use my Tombow, which is my go-to glue because I don't have a straight eye in my head. And with the Tombow, it just gives me a couple of seconds when I'm adhering the project down, my artwork down, to get it positioned right before <laughs> before it uh, actually sticks firm. Let me get this here. Just want to make sure that's stuck. Let's see, this just gives me a couple 